Hey, Tom here, and uh, in this video, we're going to take a look at um, some lessons learned on the CNC mill. <laughs> Hey, before we get started today, um, just a real quick announcement. Uh, I cannot believe how quickly this channel has grown. Um, we are pushing a thousand subscribers and a hundred thousand views. Uh, may not seem like a lot to you know, compare to some of these guys, but for me, those are some big milestones. And I wanted to say thanks to each and every one of you for watching and subscribing and uh, sharing and uh, all the, the comments, I, you know, people may make comments that are, you know, calling me out on stuff from time to time, but you know what, I, it's pretty rare that I have a troll, you know, a true troll. Most people that make comments, even that are of negative nature, I, are trying to help me do something better, so that's the way I take it. Thank you guys very much for watching, and let's get on with the show. Well, I got the CNC mill functioning, working well. Um, I've been working on getting it tuned and things like that. Uh, in the meantime, uh, you're making some improvements. We've got the, uh, got the limit switches working, homing's working. Um, so basically I can fire it up, click a button, it goes to a, a, a known reference point. Uh, establishes a zero um, a coordinate system and then from there I can go and use any alternate coordinate systems I need to and um, put soft limits in so that I won't try and over travel and um, frankly it's a convenience factor. Um, I love the way that it works in the, the plasma cam. I've seen it on other systems out there. Uh, the Tormach does it uh, in lots of other systems. You know, the first thing you do once the system's warmed up is you home it right, and, and uh, get things going. So I got that in place. I'm gonna replace these. You can almost see it on the camera. These crappy little uh, bellows uh, retainers with some, you know, heavier gauge aluminum to hold the bellows in place. Uh, keep the ways clean. A um, couple of little, you know other little things there, and then uh, we'll get back to work on the doors. While doing all this and doing tuning and everything else, I had a rush job come in. Uh, it was an engraving job, and uh, it's actually something that uh, I've I covered briefly in some of the other videos. Um, but you know, I, I shot some more video because I actually ran the job again last night, trying to improve on it. The rush job was okay. Um, I one of the best parts though for me personally because I take all of this very seriously is that uh, even though it was a rush job um, <laughs> timing has worked out in that uh, every time it was supposed to have been presented uh, it, it didn't happen um, so basically every couple of weeks I've been getting a reprieve and, and getting a chance to try it again and see if I can improve on it um, so I uh, the engraving itself is coming out fine. It looks great, right? Uh, what's not working very well, for me at least, is the visual aspect of the drag engraving on the brass uh, plates. And so I spent quite a bit of time uh, mucking around with that. And effectively what it boils down to is you have to catch the light just right. You might actually be able to see a little bit of the engraving in there, right? It's not bright enough. Um, I tried doing a little different. Now you can kind of see that there's some engraving on there from that angle, right? You can see some engraving there. You can kind of see it. Uh, that was, um, believe it or not, I used some uh, degreaser and the um, acidity of it darkened everything. And so that, uh, that did a little bit. Um, straight out of the box, this is what it looks like. And you can actually see it best like that, right? It catches the light just right and you can see it. Um, this is 10 thousandths thick material, right? It's basically shim stock. Um, of course, I don't know what I did here, but apparently I used the wrong G-code file and so some of the stuff's not centered. Thought I had the right file in place. Guess not. So, um, 
should have all of this picture in picture playing this whole time, so you should have been able to see uh, some of the video of, of that happening. So it's not just me talking uh, throughout this whole video. So lessons learned on all of this so far. Uh, oh, and the other thing that I did, I'm not sure if we've covered it. I'll have to go back and look on some of the other videos, but I changed the controller around. Um, I did a bunch of work on that. In fact, um, the first issue I was having with all of this is that I could not get, uh, I couldn't get Mach 4, which is what I was using uh, for the software. Uh, I couldn't get it to, to acknowledge uh, backlash adjustments and backlash compensation. Um, got frustrated enough that I literally, I yanked the hard drive out of the computer, put a new one in and put Linux CNC on. That way I could always go back to the old hard, you know, the old system if I wanted to. Put Linux CNC on there and fought with that learning curve uh, to um, get the machine configured and set up. Uh, frankly, it was the best decision I could have made. Uh, it's not, not quite as easy to use or as polished uh, as, as some of the things that I've used in Mock. Uh, but, oh my god, it runs so much better. And you can change the graphical interface. You can actually make it look really nice. You, um, there's an interface for it called Touchy, which is for <laughs> Touchy. Yeah. All right, I'm 12, I know. Um, <clears throat> for touchscreen panels, it, it's awfully close to what Pathpilot looks like for Tormach, right? Uh, in fact, Pathpilot's based on Linux CNC. Um, so, switching to Linux CNC enabled me to really up my game on this machine. Um, got the backlash dialed into you know, negligible, you know, half a thou kinds of... Uh, um, readings. So, very important. I'm doing a bunch of this very fine engraving, and when a line goes up and over and back and around, it matched up right. Everything looked nice. Um, that was the problem I was having with the, um, maybe I'll put, a, I'll put a card up for this one, uh, the engraving, or not the engraving, the milling that I did for uh, Big D's cigars, right? That brand that I did. Tiny, tiny little, you know, 16th uh, inch end mill doing this under. But I had enough backlash in there that over time it was losing its position and I was off a significant amount. Uh, that's why I had to keep going back and resetting my zeros and doing, and it was a real pain, right? So having backlash compensation fixed and dialed in right, really important. So that's working uh, well. Um, <clears throat> the other thing that uh, Linux CNC let me do is get the limit switches in place with the soft limits. Probably could have gotten that done with Mach uh, as well, but um, without the backlash compensation, it just doesn't matter, right? So I uh, fought with that for a little while. That turned out to be a whole lot easier than I thought it was. Um, you know, once I got, once I figured out the format of the, um, I mean, there's a nice wizard in there that helps you configure things. It's not everything though. So you have to be able to, to, to spend a little bit of time reading manuals. Uh, once you read the manual, go figure, you know, read a little bit, figure things out. Some of it was just me not being experienced with how these controllers work. So got that going and uh, really able to uh, get things dialed in much better. Um, you know, the homing, the, uh, I've never had this thing run as well as it does right now. I'm, Jog rates up to 120 inches a minute. I, I couldn't do under under uh, mock. I was getting 30, I think 25. Um, <clears throat> granted, some of that some of that is my my own fault, right? I struggled with the tuning parameters under mock on how to get um, the acceleration and velocities uh, working properly. I don't have, I didn't have that problem with, with Linux CNC, right? It just, it, it worked. Um, it was in the wizard, didn't take long to figure out. And next thing I know, I've got this thing cruising along. I mean, the engraving I was doing was at 40 inches a minute. And, um, you know, drag engravers, you can go pretty fast. I probably could have dialed it up even more. There was no issue with, with um, the speed on that part of it. It'd be interesting to see, I'm, I'm getting ready to, and I've got to do some more work on, on getting this done. Getting ready to uh, do some uh, tests under uh, under load, right? So effectively, actually, I think I, yep, I got the, my little part here. I'm gonna make. <laughs> it's my little smiley face. 
my daughter kind of uh, like that. But basically, we're going to do a square, a circle, and a slot, right, or a, a rectangle. And so we're going to check uh, for uh, parallelism. We're going to check for our accuracy and in, in, uh, making sure that I'm not losing steps or things like that. So I think I've got everything dialed in well, but you know it's in doing these real uh, load testing that uh, we'll be able to figure that out. Um, so that's where things are right now. I've got yeah, there's some plexi, you know, plexiglass there for the doors. I'm just kind of cleaning stuff up here. I, this is the longest video I've actually released in quite a while. Uh, I've been trying to keep my videos down to about um, you know five minutes or so. Uh, this one's pushing ten already, so I do appreciate you sticking with me. Um, yeah, thank you very much. I, I really appreciate it, and uh, I hope to have some new projects coming up soon. I'm actually traveling this week, so uh, there won't be a whole lot um, coming up. I might. If I can, I'll work through some of the drawings, and maybe I'll do uh, do that. I did just make a video for uh, James Green, uh, Eagle Dustoff, on using PowerDirector. Uh, I am not a PowerDirector power user by any means. Um, I know a lot of you guys, uh, a lot of the content you guys out there uh, do use that. Um, I think Keith Fenner, I think Adam Booth uses it. Uh, you know, a couple other guys use it. I, I use Final Cut Pro to do my video editing. Um, but I got, you know, I, I did just recently do a, a, a down and dirty basics for PowerDirector. I might release that to the public right now. It's just a private unlisted URL. If you do want uh, to see it, it's 15 minutes long. Um, send me an email, send me a note, I'll send you the, the link. Um, if there's enough people who are asking for it, I'll just make it public. Uh, but uh, that being said, um, yeah, let's wrap it up. Thanks for watching. I appreciate all of the, uh, the time. Appreciate all the, the great comments. Uh, Nick, my, my nephew Nick, just was giddy to see how many likes and comments uh, that uh, our, our project got. So thank you guys very much for all the kind words. It means a heck of a lot to me that there are so many awesome people like you guys out there uh, willing to take the time to say something. So uh, thanks, I appreciate it. See you soon.